video, I wanted to answer the question related to my previous video, which is, is the salt version of 5-MeO DMT and malt when administered into the nose with a nasal spray, is that harmful to the nasal tissue? And the reason we could suspect it might be harmful is because there is some burning sensation involved, some discomfort, and usually if the body has some sort of a pain response, then that means it's hurting the body. And that's not always the case, but let us ask here, is it harmful to the body? Because we want to have that spirit of minimizing harm in all our psychedelic use so that we can use these tools in a way that is benefiting us and not harming our health. So with that introduction, there are two ways in which this 5-MeO salt could cause a burning sensation in one's nose. The first way is through osmosis. That is definitely what causes some amount of pain. And that is actually the same pain or burning that you feel when you go swimming in the ocean. The ocean having a high salt concentration as well. So this high salt concentration in your nose, it actually pulls water out of the cells in your nose and that causes some discomfort. But this osmosis, it is completely not harmful to the body. It is just a slightly uncomfortable sensation, but within a few minutes, the body again reaches homeostasis and then it is a completely unharmful thing that happened in, in the nose. Interestingly, the exact opposite reason is why fresh water, 100% pure H2O, that can also sting the nose, because in this case, the cells themselves have a medium salt content, whereas the water has zero salt, and so some of the water is being pulled into the cells, and again, that can cause some discomfort. But the second potential thing that could cause some pain and be harmful to the body is if the pH of the salt solution is not neutral. So if the pH is acidic or basic, then that can actually damage our body, damage the cells. Now, this is actually also the reason why we don't want to put the free base version of 5 meo DMT or malt up our nose. First of all, the free base version, it doesn't dissolve very well into water, but also the free base version definitely is basic which is similar to acidity, it hurts the body. Theoretically, actually, both HCl and a tryptamine, they are both a strong acid and a strong base, so they should cancel out just like sodium chloride to create a neutral solution. But I actually wanted to test this to be 100% sure, so that's why we have this little litmus thumbnail at the start of the video. So first of all, just to make sure everything works, I tried it with a bit of vinegar, and found that indeed I get a result for an acid, a low pH. Then I tried it with some baking soda and found that it has a high pH, so it's a base. Then I tried it with pink Himalayan salt and found that the pH is very close to seven. And then we get to the drum roll moment, the moment of truth, where I put a little bit of water on 5-MeO malt, HCl, and I found with the litmus test, it has a pH of exactly 7. There is no reaction happening there. So this result is very much good news. And if you want to keep this topic simple, all you need to remember is to always buy the HCl version of either 5-MeO-DMT or 5-MeO-Malt. And then the salt will have a neutral pH when you mix it with water. And actually, if you go searching online, for a 5-MeO salt, they almost always are, from my experience, sold as a HCl salt. So that's very good. But I will now get a little bit more complex into this topic, a little bit more detailed. Perhaps if you're interested in the science, you could find this interesting as well. Because you see, combining HCl with a 5-MeO, it is quite simple, you could say. Because as I mentioned earlier, we're combining a strong acid with a strong base. But in some cases, this might not be true. You might actually combine the strong base of 5-MeO 
with a weak acid, and this acid could be fumarate, acetate, or succinate, for example. And in this particular case, it's a little bit more complex. Now, it took me a while to wrap my head around this theory, this topic, the chemistry here, but I found the best way to understand this and visualize it is with a titration graph. And I created a little one for you here with my software. I hope you like it. So the main difference, as you can see here, is that the equilibrium point of a strong acid and a strong base is exactly at a pH of 7. But when you have a strong base and a weak acid, then the equilibrium point is higher and you will have a basic solution. We'll come back to that graph in a minute. But first, I think we need to ask an important question here, which is, what is an acceptable pH to be using and putting into our bodies? Now, I'm not a scientist and I couldn't find any good consensus on the internet about this. But after reading about some common pH of various chemicals around the house and that we use, like nasal spray, for instance, and seawater and things like this, the conclusion for myself is that I'm happy to put any solution up my nose, which I think is quite sensitive. I will put a solution up there if it has a pH between 6 and 8, so quite neutral. Then, if you want to go with the rear end administration, I think the tissue there is not as sensitive, and so I'm okay putting a solution up there that has a pH between 5 and 9, which is still quite neutral. And with the pH scale, you've got to remember that this is a logarithmic, <laughs> logarithmic scale. So a pH of 4 is actually 10 times more acidic than a pH of 5. So that's where I will draw the boundaries for myself. And I recommend to be safe, other people also take this general suggestion as a guideline. So if you actually, for some reason, have purchased a, let's say, 5-MeO DMT fumarate, what I suggest is that you actually buy a little litmus test. They only cost a few dollars and measure the pH. Let us now get back to our graph. And I want to use this to actually refine the ratios that I recommend in my previous video, which is about converting the free base version of 5-MeO DMT into the salt version. And I recommend that we do this using acetic acid, which is actually just household vinegar, and it's a very convenient technique. But if we look carefully, and I didn't actually consider this at the time, vinegar has a pH that could be as low as 2.5, or let's say 3. And for me, this is now outside our little acceptable level of pH. So I did a little bit of experimentation and let's look at our graph to make sense of it all. So I measured out 11 milligrams of 5-MeO-DMT and added enough vinegar so that in theory, it will bring the solution to its equilibrium point. At this stage, I measured the pH with a little litmus paper and found that it is actually slightly basic, which makes sense because combining a strong base with a weak acid should give us a slightly basic solution. Next, I added more vinegar to be triple the amount of required vinegar. And in this case, I found that the pH is actually very close to 7. And this is sort of what we want to aim for. So thus far, this graph I've been showing you is simply indicative of the theory but now that I'm doing some actual tests and we have data, we have results, we can correct the shape of the graph to be more realistic. I then added more vinegar, which brought up the total amount to five times the required amount to equalize the solution. And in this case, I indeed found that now the pH is too low for our little Goldilocks zone. So if we look at the shape of our graph, we can see that if we want to hit the pH between 9 and 5 for the rear end administration, this area lies in adding more vinegar than is required to simply equalize the solution. So the conclusion here is that actually we have quite a large buffer area in how much vinegar we can add 
in order to keep the pH between 5 and 9. So this isn't something we need to be very accurate on, but still what I have done is I posted in the pinned comment and in the description of my video beforehand a guideline for how much vinegar you should add depending on your dosage. And actually the example I gave, it was bang on and already it will be very close to pH neutral, but where the exception comes in or where we need to make a correction is when you're actually taking a small amount of 5-MeO-DMT, then we don't want to add 30 milliliters of vinegar as I recommend. Actually, we want to add less vinegar than that. And then we can simply add some more water to further dilute it 